the problem is to graph the equation 4x plus 3y equals negative 12. For every value of x, there is a value of y. So there are many, many solutions for the pair of numbers x, y. The first approach, the most straightforward approach, is simply to come up with a few values of x and see what y needs to be. Say x is 0. If x is 0, then instead of 4x plus 3y equals negative 12, we're, we're going to write 4 times 0 plus 3y equals to negative 12. And no matter what number we use for x, now this is a linear equation in just one variable y, so we can solve for it. In this case, 3y equals negative 12, so y is negative 4. So we found a point 0, negative 4, right? If x was 0, y turned out to be negative 4. Okay, we can graph that. There it is. Now let's see what happens if x equals 1. If x equals 1, the equation is 4x plus 3y equals negative 12. So we're going to get 4 times 1 plus 3y equals negative 12. So 3y plus 4 equals negative 12. And we have to solve this equation for y. So we're going to subtract 4. 3y is negative 16, so y equals negative 16 over 3, or negative 5 and 1 third. So we found a point 1, negative 5 and a third. This is not a very nice point. If we want to graph this line with precision, we should probably only use points with integer coordinates. A point of whose both x and y coordinates are integers is called a lattice point. This is not completely useless, we can use it for checking. So what happened here? In the last step, we divided by 3. And that's where things went wrong, because negative 16 is not divisible by 3. We sort of got lucky with, with x equals 0, because negative 12 is divisible by 3. If we insist on using lattice points, and we should, as long as we can, in this particular case, when we solve for y, in, in both cases, we divided by 3. So getting an integer value for y hinges on divisibility by 3, which means that if a number works, then the next number that will work is if we add or subtract 3 or a multiple of 3. If 0 worked, then 1 won't work, 2 won't work, but 3 will again work. Let's see. So if x is 3, then the equation... 4x plus 3y equals negative 12 will become 4 times 3 plus 3y equals negative 12. So 3y plus 12 equals negative 12. We subtract 12, so 3y is negative 24. And that is divisible by 3, although we're running into other issues. So y is negative 8. So we found a point 3, negative 8. Now 3, negative 8 is off the paper. But 1, negative 5 and 1 third sort of makes sense, right? Um, and that tells us that maybe we should try negative 3 and negative 6 instead of going to 6, because by 6 this will be way off. So let's try x equals negative 3. If x equals negative 3, then we're putting x equals negative 3 into this equation and solve for y. So we have 4 times negative 3 plus 3y equals negative 12. So negative 12 plus 3y equals to negative 12. We add 12 to both sides. 3y is 0. We divide both sides by 3. So y equals 0. So what we got is when x is negative 3, then y is 0. So we found the point negative 3, 0. Negative 3, 0. And we kind of see a pattern emerge here. So we can expect for negative 6 something higher, uh, a positive value. Let's see that. So if x is negative 6, so if x is negative 6, we have 4 times negative 6 plus 3y equals negative 12. And it's negative 24 plus 3y equals negative 12. We add 24 to both sides. Negative 12 plus 24 is positive 12. 
And now when we divide both sides by 3, we get y equals 4. So we found the point negative 6, 4. Negative 6, 4. And so all, well, it looks like we found three points, but there was a fourth one, and even that fits the pattern. It looks like probably we're on the right track. So we just put the um, rulers and connect the dots. Oops. There. Okay. These two are special points, and we will see these uh, later. This point is where this particular line intersects the x-axis. That is called an x-intercept. So this point is what we call the x-intercept of the line. And this other point is where the graph intersects the y-axis. And that is called the y-intercept of the line. Okay. Thank you for watching.